Todd joins us, and this is a Californian conversation, Chuck. We we always say the, and so you you know we're talking to two Californians. We had an earthquake. How are you? Uh, I'm okay, and um, I, color me, you might as well be speaking in ones and zeros when you start with the California <laughs> freeway talk. I have to say, I got a buddy who does the same thing. You know, 405, go to 10, you're like, oh, man, you know, no, no, in Miami? It, we yeah, well, name all of our expressways. <laughs> we have the Don Shula Expressway, the Palmetto Expressway, the Sunshine. So you know, we we name the Turnpike. We we name our stuff. You guys do the numbers, and it drives me. Drives me they have a Don Shula Expressway. I like that. Well, of Don- course we do. Well, what do well, you I did, think? I didn't know that. Oh, he, yes. Are you allowed oh, to drive seventy two on it or something? <laughs> well, I owe. I owe. All right. Hey, uh, we're talking undefeated. California. My tickets are undefeated. Or, uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, and, and the Indians blew a uh, – uh, oh, Jack, uh, never mind. I'll get started on the Indians. I want to talk to you about California. Politico ran a story this week that suggested Kamala Harris was Joe Biden's <laughs> choice. I've, I've been saying that for two years she would be on the ticket, mm-hmm. so I kind of hope that. But as a Republican, I'm more worried about Val Demings. Is it over, Chuck Todd? Is it already in the bag? So – here's my first, here's our first read lead today, and it was something Mark Burney and I were, have been talking about. Just look at recent history. Candidates that are ahead at the time that they make their VP choice, it's almost always the conventional choice. Joe Biden was that. Tim Kaine was that, arguably. Um, and so, you know, you could look. But if you look at candidates who are behind when they pick their beef stakes, that's when you got Jack Kemp. That's when you got Sarah Palin. That's when you got um, that's when you got Joe Lieberman. You know, so if you just look at it that You know, and Kamala Harris has basically been the predicted running mate for Joe Biden since this campaign started. Joe Biden was among the first three or four people people talked about about a Barack Obama nomination. You know what I mean? So, you know, the do no harm aspect and all of this, I I think the problem for Demings is simply she doesn't know Biden. There's no relationship. And I think at the end of the day, you got to have some personal relationship with your running mate. I think when you don't, McCain Palin. It shows up and it's uncomfortable. And now, and now so the reason Val I just Demings think that I'm, I think she is the bigger future. Look, she's a, I'll tell you this: Ron DeSantis better be rooting for Val Demings on the ticket. You know why? Because if she doesn't get on the ticket, she's going to be the front runner for the Democratic nomination for governor in 2022. Now you know Florida. Anyone who has been a cop in Orlando for almost three decades mm-hmm. is going to be a realist. They're going to know human nature. That's yeah. actually why I'm attracted to her. Anyone who's been a I beat cop agree. for thirty years completely knows everything. Agree. How about the? But forget that. The whole story. I mean, this is just you know she's an American. Her and her husband. They met as beat cops. They got married, started family, moved up the ladder. These are you know, it, it is exactly the story of what. Everybody wants to believe what you can do in America type of thing. And so, yeah, no, I think she's a great story. I think you're right. I think the, being a beat cop, not just a police chief, right? It's, it's both right. being at the top and at the bottom, right? right. Being in both rungs, right? You see, no, I, I, I think you're right. That real life experience creates a pragmatism that I think is appealing to people center left and center right. So I, I, I think that's true. I just think there is just, you can't create personal chemistry. It's very difficult in this environment. And I think we know. In, in that sense. And I also think Biden, I think Biden thinks, look, I think if she were Senator Deming or if it were Senator Susan Rice, both of them, I think Susan Rice would be the pick if she were an elected official. Had she been, you know, I think the personal rapport matters to him a lot, which is why I think he's he's, he's going to end up. Yeah, the last thing that I would cross, though, if I were Joe, the, the, the Scranton thing, the itch he always scratches. Uh, Val mm-hmm. Demings, uh, the reason I'm scared as a Republican is she will connect with people. Cops have to connect she with people every day. I, 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 I've said this to others. I said, you know, who can you send to Macomb County? Who can yes. you send to pick Scranton? Who can you send in anywhere in the country? And, I, you know, I don't know if the former San Francisco district attorney can play as well in Macomb County as the former Orlando police chief. I, I no, just, they, they you know, can't. If you're gonna if you're going to do it in those terms. And so. Yeah, that, that's where I've, uh, I've looked at that and, and seen it that way. But, look, I think at the end of the day, it, it, nobody is going to say, boy, why'd you pick Kamala Harris, right? And I think ultimately it's going to, you know, this is probably a one-day story in some ways anyway, and, unless it's an unusual pick, and there won't be the, the backbiting and all this stuff. So, you know, I think that's where we're headed. In fact, 
if I were to say who's the closest second right now, I think it's Karen Bass. I think this Karen Bass stuff is, is real because unlike Demings, Biden has a has gotten to know her. Uh, you know, I and, I think it will be and Harris. Clyburn and... is whispering in her is whispering in her ear a little bit on Bass, and she's really well respected inside. Look, Doctor. Dr. Kevin McCarthy, you know this. Kevin yes. McCarthy and Karen Bass work with Arnold Schwarzenegger. They were, they're fine. You know? yeah. She's yeah. fine, too. I just think the cop thing is, is an uh, as a Republican, it gives permission to a lot of Republicans who are worried about Democrats to vote for, for Joe Biden. That's that She's a permission giver. When, when we go back to Kamala Harris, how many times do you think we'll see the busing clip? That is, to me, the only downside to her being on the ticket. I, I think that busing clip will show... A thousand times. It is. I, let me ask it this way. Does it does it allow Biden to project some strength that he's not afraid of taking a critic? Put it this way. Would Donald Trump ever pick a running mate who was that who is that publicly harsh on him? No. Right. It, w- it would know, never so happen. A, it, 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 right. Exactly. So it's a double. I think to some people, they'll sit that and say, oh, that's that shows maybe he does want a team of rivals or, you know, to some people. It might be an asset, not the liability. But you're right; it could stir up the pot a little bit you know, among some African American uh, support. All right. Last question has to do with this uh, package. I've been railing against the Republican caucus this morning. Sort of an unusual show, because I think they're out of their minds if they let a half trillion dollars with a deficit of twenty-five and a half to twenty-seven trillion dollars stand in the way of keeping their Senate majority check. I think it's just absolutely nuts. It's maybe the dumbest political thing I've ever seen, and it's bad for the country first, but it's also the dumbest. You're making the Tom Cotton argument, which is, look, you may not like this deficit, but it's going to get costlier if you lose everything. 100 percent. Isn't that the argument he's making? 100 percent. And and the idea. I think it's a a total disaster. We've seen a lot of S shows on Capitol Hill. This is among the worst. This is a disaster in the making, and they got to get they got to get it get their act together quickly here, or I think they could they could pay a steep price. Now, now, who is the who's? But Meadows and Minutia knows this. McConnell knows this. Who and I asked Jake Sherman earlier because I would really love to know. Rand Paul, I'm sure, is complaining. Who else is is holding this up? It's not clear, other than. I think that the numbers in the Senate Republican caucus are worse than we think. I think it's more than 20. And here's the problem, Hugh, and I think you see this coming, which is I think this is sort of like it's sort of like an accelerated tart where you have a whole bunch of people going, I don't want my fingerprints on that. I'm out. And I think this is a bunch of people looking at 2021 thinking I'm going to be better off having clean hands than not. And you're just thinking if you're there in 2021, you might have clean hands. But what if you're not there? Or what if you're not in the majority? It, does it matter if your hands are clean uh, on some of this stuff? So I, yeah, I, I, I think it's beyond short-sighted. I mean, you're just handing, you know, just looking at crass political terms, you're handing it. The Democrats have passed the bill. They've been waiting. They were willing to do this, this, and this. It, it, the Republicans are owning this, and they're sort of like doubling owning this in some ways by having the public fight between the Senate and the White House here. So, I mean, it doesn't help when Ben Sass is calling Mnuchin a big government Democrat and Marco Rubio is saying, hey, making the, the argument you're making, which is, what are you doing here if you, you know, this is a small price to pay for a, avoiding a larger price down the road. So it has the additional I, I, I benefit gotta, of being necessary. We've got thousands of businesses that need PPP yes, and millions of, of being necessary. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's, it, 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 honestly, economy, And, Hugh, I think this economy, you know, we're going to get this horrible GDP report today, and we all know it's going to be bad. Do you know how bad things would have been without this extra money into the economy? Amen. PPP is running out. People will know what unemployment really is when PPP runs out. Uh, And so they'll know. And you want you want to you want to start Labor Day, the 60 day sprint to the election with not with 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 an unemployment rate that's going to spike in September. Yeah. Remember the stupid party cliche? It's not a cliche. Uh, it's, 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 uh, this is one of those days when I actually think I would love to just get a one day pass into the Senate caucus and tell them what callers say. Chuck Todd will be watching Sunday on meet the press. Hopefully by that time, you'll be talking about the great compromise. Mitch McConnell pulled another rabbit out of his hat.